Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello and welcome to the Monday edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Kimberly Hefner and today is August 21st, 2017. It's been a wet one across the state and in just a moment we're going to tell you uh, all the details about the rain systems across the state including your aviation, marine and public forecast. Let's start the day with going over the hazards across the area. The only um, hazard that's out there right now is along the coastal areas of the Kotzebue Sound here. Uh, we're looking at a high surf advisory bringing seas between 6 to 11 feet. Uh, t starting tonight at midnight and running through Tuesday uh, at, at midnight, looking for the areas along uh, the highlighted yellow uh, advisory to see some high surf that could cause coastal erosion. If you have any activities along the coast in these areas, you should uh, use caution as the high surf is going to be coming up late tonight and continuing through all of Tuesday. Uh, looking at the weather systems that are out there and bringing the moisture across the state, we have two areas of concern. I'll put this into motion. You can see the first spin here in the Gulf of Alaska with a secondary Vortmax coming up to um, intensify this low as we head through tonight. Now the other low pressure system that is out here is dropping down along the northwest coast. This is bringing a cold front. So not a lot of spin on this guy to the north here, but just a slow counterclockwise spin. You can see just uh, to the north of the Bering Strait. Over the eastern areas of the uh, Bering waters, we do have a ridge of high pressure. And this is primarily in the darker colors, bringing some colder cloud tops there. So lower uh, mid to low level clouds across much of the eastern areas of the Bering with a few break points in between the low pressure system to the north and to the south. I gave some viewing areas just along the interior west coast today uh, for, th for the e eclipse. Everywhere else was pretty much in clouds and didn't have that good viewing uh, during the morning hours. Now further out to the west, we do have another low pressure system that's approaching the western Aleutians. However, uh, ahead of this is just kind of weak ridging about to ADAC, and that's where we see one little Vortmax that came up ahead of the low pressure from the North Pacific. Just put this into motion one more time. You can just see the low clouds rolling through where that ridge is and the next plume of moisture headed for the western Aleutians. Now your weather systems today, here's the main low of focus across the south central and southeast all along the panhandle. Saw a good amount of moisture the last few days. Uh, just in the last 24 hours, there was recorded one to three inches uh, at many stations across the Gulf uh, and along the southeast. Now the three inches were isolated to the coastal areas and higher elevations with Whittier also uh, running totals this morning above two inches there. Uh, for the Prince William Sound location. So otherwise we saw around a quarter to just over a half an inch for m most locations at sea level. And then across the northern tier, light rain occurring uh, across the north and west coast brought about a tenth of an inch for those locations. Inland areas also across the central Fairbanks area and on over to the eastern border there saw about a tenth of an inch as well. Now, as we head into tonight, expect low pressure to continue in the Gulf, um, 999 millibar low. Not an impressive system, however, it's holding together. And with that resurgence of energy coming up from the North Pacific, this low is gonna continue to bring a large swath of rain through the Southeast. Uh, so all the Panhandle can expect another one to three inches as we head through your Tuesday. Across the South Central areas, back towards the Eastern Kenai, they'll see a little bit less, but we could see up to a half an inch along the coastal areas with just about a tenth of an inch for areas just inland. Now across the interior areas, a little bit drier between the two low pressure systems, but still seeing a cloudier and wet 
pattern areas across the western interior uh, Koyukuk valleys are looking at increasing cloud coverage as this low pressure system begins to drop to the south tonight. Uh, we'll see rain being consistent across the northwest coast back towards the um, Yukon uh, uh, Delta and we'll see some patchy fog as well develop uh, along the colder air mass that's dropping to the south. The fog that's over the bearing tonight will develop uh, mainly from Bristol Bay to the central areas of the bearing, while the western areas will primarily be under low clouds as this next low pressure system lifts to the north. However, of course, there's going to be some reduced visibilities when this very wet low pressure system moves up to the western Aleutians. Now as we head into the day on Tuesday, the low pressure system from the North Pacific will begin to approach the Pribilof Islands there, bring a large swath of rain by the afternoon to the eastern Aleutians all the way back uh, to the western waters. So expect some uh, rain accumulations there with that system between a quarter to a half an inch. As we go through your Tuesday, the, the next surface low pressure will be approaching from the North Pacific as that upper level disturbance moves to the north. And we, we will see um, not much of a break between the weather systems, just kind of put a break between the first low that lifts inland and the second low pressure that's beginning to lift north. Now, uh, it'll be a little bit of a drier day across areas for south central as weak ridging in between the two systems uh, under um, low pressure to the east. We will see a few um, showers develop in the afternoon along the mountain ranges. Uh, primarily as a weak disturbance moves through, but not expecting more than a tenth of an inch for your day tomorrow. And like I said, that's mainly going to be across the mountains, a few showers moving westward. And we'll see this next low pressure system moving a little bit further inland from the coast. Now this is going to be kind of slowly edging in towards the central interior, and that's going to be bring some late rain along with it. Across the northern coast, we'll see some showery condi conditions across the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, and definitely a cooler pat pattern set settling in through the west coast. The ridge will begin to uh, flatten out as we head through the day on Tuesday, with Wednesday the low pressure system from the western bearing taking over uh, the eastern, eastern waters. This occluded front is going to be weakening. However, we're going to have a very tight gradient, so the windy conditions around the current low pressure system pretty much out of the north will switch directions and become more of a southeasterly flow ahead of it with the very strong westerly flow along the base of this low pressure system on Wednesday. Now for the southeast, it is going to be continuing to bring some rain showers as the low pressure kind of shifts a little bit further towards uh, the panhandle and we do see some ridging in, be in behind the system. So yet another drier pattern across South Central and the interior as the low pressure kind of gets stalled along just across the central areas of the state. We'll see more of a northerly flow developing and bring that colder air just about the base of the Brooks Range and, and back towards the Seward Peninsula. And the coldest air mass is going to stay to the north and this next low pressure system is actually going to have a warmer air mass just moving across the Gulf waters. It's going to be a very cloudy pattern as we head through your Wednesday with these multiple low pressure systems coming through and also more moisture from the upper level low that's tracking across east across the northern tier of the state. Now let's take a look at your temperatures today. It was kind of cool across most of the area with temperatures ranging along the coast and just inland in the mid-50s to lower 60s. The warmest area of the state was actually in Talkeetna today. They had gotten up to 70 degrees across the interior areas, mostly in the mid-50s to lower 60s as well. Marshall had seen the coolest temperatures this morning at 30 degrees. Across the northern tier of the state, we had temperatures in the mid-40s this afternoon. So looking at the west coast, temperatures were primarily in the low to mid-50s with the southwestern region uh, across Bristol Bay in the lower 60s. The bearing primarily was in the low to mid-50s. Let's take a look at your temperatures for tonight. Temperature conditions are going to remain nearly steady across the northern tier of the state uh, in the lower 40s across the northwest there. The temperatures 
in general will be warmest across the southwest Kaskokwim Delta with temperatures in the upper 40s. And also the southeast will be warmer, however, very rainy will make it not feel as warm with 52 degrees uh, across much of the area, a little warmer towards St. Uh, Petersburg with um, 54 degrees. Across the Gulf waters, expect uh, temperatures to range between the mid 40s to lower 50s. Now Bristol Bay, looking at cooler temperatures for the west there in the low to mid 40s, and temperatures all across the Bering should be in the mid to uh, low, low 40s and 50s. Looking at your temperature increases for tomorrow, warmest temperatures are expected across interior areas of the state, mainly in the low to mid 60s, with um, possibly warm conditions there up across the Susitna Valley again. And we'll see the coldest area of the state across the western areas of the Brooks Range and the Seward Peninsula, only um, expecting to be around 41 to 45 degrees, which they'll be nearly steady with their temperatures tomorrow. And then along the Bering locations, again, another day in the 50s. And the southeast will have a day in the mid 50s to lower 60s. So very low, slightly warmer temperatures across South Central. So that's probably going to be the no most notable areas uh, for South Central and the eastern tier of the state. Looking at your flying weather conditions tomorrow morning, uh, looking for IFR conditions across all the north and western areas of the state and much of the bearing. The southeast is going to be down in IFR for most of the day with some patchy MVFR and IFR conditions across south central. Looking at the western areas of the bearing, staying in IFR conditions as that next low pressure system rolls up. Not expecting any improvement across the western areas of the state except uh, lifting to MVFR through late day for the Seward Peninsula. Across the Brooks Range, expect conditions to diminish um, across Anatovic, uh, the central areas of the Brooks Range. Now, the southeast will primarily stay down in IFR to MVFR conditions for most of the day tomorrow. Looking at Anatovic, there they go from VFR to MVFR tomorrow. However, Attigan stays at VFR tomorrow. At Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, decreasing conditions to from VFR to MVFR, and Rainy Pass will also expect it to go down to MVFR. Looking at Windy Pass, will go VFR to MVFR, possibly late day, and Isabel will start out VFR and possibly go to MVFR. And then Mentasa will go from IFR lifting to VFR, and Snedo Pass will go IFR to MVFR later in the day. And we'll see Portage go from MVFR to VFR tomorrow, and conditions for Chilkoot and both White Pass staying IFR all day long. Now the freezing levels for tomorrow morning, we'll see a two to 4,000 foot rise across the Bering Strait and then increasing through the southern areas of the state between eight to 10,000 feet. The highest uh, elevations will go from 10 to 14,000 feet. And then across the southeast, expecting the freezing levels between 10 to 12,000 feet, decreasing across the southern gulf there at 6,000 feet. That is a cold core system approaching in the southern gulf. And we'll see the icing above 10,000 feet is going to be the concern across the eastern Gulf waters and the southeast, and below 6,000 feet across the western areas of the state. Across the western bearing, icing concerns are primarily above 12,000. Looking at your jet stream, here, here we go. From west to east, we have troughing across the western waters with an increase in speeds around the ridge across the eastern bearing. And here's a steep amplified low pressure across the Gulf waters. At 9,000 feet, we do have uh, the ridge kind of stacked here with uh, the highest speeds between the low pressure and the high pressure there to the south. A little bit of a jet max around the low pressure across the northwest coast. And also be aware that we're going to have a little bit of a gustier condition across the east side of the low pressure in the Gulf waters and kind of a gusty 20 to 25 knots across the backside of that low in the western waters. It's, it's a very stacked system uh, for all points on the map, looking at very similar wind speeds with the change of direction around the two low pressure systems with a jet max um, between 30 to 35 knots on either side of the low pressure system there in the Gulf. Across the western areas of the Bering, look for 35 to 40 knots, 
highest speeds across the central and southern bearing there. And then your turbulence in summary, uh, we'll see some issues across the northwest coast below 5,000 feet and gusty conditions. These are mainly for speed maxes below 5,000 feet as well for the Alaska Peninsula and below 5,000 feet for that approaching front that's making its way across the western bearing. Uh, any turbulent concern should remain over the Gulf waters uh, primarily uh, across the su southeastern Gulf. Now in just a moment, we'll be back with your marine forecast. Each year, millions of outdoor enthusiasts get a jump start on the boating season. For fishermen, hikers, campers, and other recreationists, the first few days of spring-like weather are the signal that it's time to launch their boats on a favorite lake, stream, or river. Whether a canoe, a john boat, skiff, car topper, or other small craft, these boaters tend to think more about the size of the fish in the lake than about being safe boaters. And all too often, this all-too-casual approach can lead to tragic consequences. After a long winter, it was exactly the kind of day that Jake McDermott and Rudy Bellows were waiting for. A chance to get back out on the lake, break out the rods and a few beers maybe even catch a fish or two. Jake McDermott, 43, father of two, the service manager at a local car dealer, his high school friend and fishing partner, Rudy Bellows, a 35-year-old bachelor and a sales manager for an auto parts distributor. Around noon, they paddled out toward the middle of the lake to try their luck at a favorite spot. The air was warming up, but the water temperature was still around 50 degrees. Jake knew the fish held close to the submerged tree and ended up snagging his lure on one of the branches. One last good tug, and he might pull it free. According to Bellow's statement to the police, when Jake first fell in, he didn't think it was a serious situation. But after a few seconds, he realized that his friend was floundering and needed help fast. But when he lost his balance and fell in, he told us he was immediately disoriented and could barely stay afloat. In the end, it was all he could do to save himself. Jake McDermott drowned just a few yards from his capsized boat in about eight feet of water. A tragic accident? Of course, they always are. But a freak accident? Far from it. In fact, everything about Jake McDermott's drowning, from where it happened to what caused it, is typical of the vast majority of fatal boating accidents that happen every year. If that sounds surprising, well, that's part of the problem. You see, contrary to popular belief, the typical accident doesn't involve a large offshore boat floundering in high seas and gale force winds. The circumstances in which most fatal accidents occur are far less dramatic. Instead of big water, the typical accident happens inland, on lakes and rivers, or small ponds and streams. And in more cases than not, it's the non-traditional boater who's involved. Fishermen, hunters, campers, people who are likely to be on the water in the spring or the fall months. And usually, it's small boats, 16 feet or less, either with no motor or one of 10 horsepower or less. Almost half of all boating fatalities happen in broad daylight and in flat, calm conditions. And most of the time, the boat isn't even underway. Thanks, Jim. Of course, no two boating accidents are exactly alike, but in all too many cases, the common denominator is alcohol. In fact, 60% of all boating deaths are somehow alcohol related. Part of the problem is that drinking while boating is almost a tradition. The one item you can bet will be on board is a cooler full of beer. But when out in a boat, the alcohol in just two or three drinks can significantly affect your balance, your vision, your judgment, and your ability to react quickly in case of an emergency. 
And don't for a minute fall for the myth that beer or wine is any less intoxicating than hard liquor. A can of beer or a glass of wine contain the same amount of alcohol as a shot of whiskey. It doesn't take much alcohol to affect your coordination. And even the slightest sense of unsteadiness can transform small boats like these into highly unstable and dangerous platforms. Under no circumstances should a boat be overloaded or overpowered. And a small boat is no place to stand up. If you have to change positions, keep a low profile and keep your weight centered toward the middle of the boat. Falling out of a boat is always an embarrassing and very often an unpleasant experience. But for the boater who's been drinking, an unexpected plunge could prove deadly. It may be hard to believe, but the inebriated person whose head is underwater can become so disoriented as to swim downward to their death rather than to the surface and safety. You know, the real tragedy of practically every boating-related drowning is that it could have been easily prevented. Wearing a personal flotation device, a PFD, is by far the single most important safety measure you can take when boating. It's a point we've been stressing for years and one that simply cannot be overemphasized. Look at it this way. Virtually every single boating-related drowning could be eliminated if the victim had been wearing a PFD. It's a time of the year when most boats have long since been hauled out of the water. But for more than two million waterfowlers in North America, it's the start of their boating season. Some may use a duck boat to head out to a water blind. For others, their boat may be nothing more than the dinghy used to set out decoys. In either case, these boaters operate in one of the most hostile boating environments of all, near freezing water. Hello and welcome back to the show. We're going to start out with your sea ice edge today. Uh, looking at the ice continuing to melt along the edge. So primarily uh, the next few days the current is going to be out of the southwest and continue to erode the ice edge. Looking at your southeast forecast, your marines for tomorrow all under uh, small craft with the lightest speeds across the inner channels out of the south. 15. Um, to 15 knots out of the south to southeast direction and all south for the outside waters at 20 knots and seas across the inner channels will be three to five feet with the outer waters seeing between seven to eight feet the highest seas to the south there a little bit of a wind directional change on Wednesday uh, the one low pressure moves off um, inland and the next one approaches so we've got a southerly flow becoming north for the inner channels and changing back to the southeast there 10 to 20 knots and small craft for uh, the areas across the wet, uh, eastern gulf and we'll see 25 knots out of the southeast with an easterly direction becoming south towards Yakutat looking at m primarily 10 to 20 knot winds across the areas seas on this day will be between two to five feet highest seas across the inner channels and across the outer waters between five to ten feet highest seas of course are going to be to the south there now looking at your western Gulf waters, uh, Cook Inlet region, we're going to see 10 to 15 knots for much of the area. However, we do have higher wind speeds across uh, the Kodiak Island over towards uh, the Amatui Island there with higher gusts, 25 knots, gusting up to 35 knots. And we're looking at seas across the Cook Inlet around two feet and also the Prince William Sound. Seas across the Gulf waters will be primarily around six feet and three to five feet across the Shalakoff Strait. And looking at your Wednesday forecast, change of wind direction there, becoming more of a southerly direction, uh, southwesterly from Shalakoff up to the Cook Inlet. Now looking at your seas on this day, we'll see primarily between two to five feet with the highest seas south of Kodiak Island and no small craft for your Wednesday. The Alaska Peninsula on Tuesday, we'll see more of a west to northwesterly flow across the area and we'll see five foot seas across the Bering side and the Pacific side will be, be between five to nine feet. On your Wednesday forecast, a change in wind direction anticipated there as well with small craft advisories across the peninsula. We'll see the lighter speeds across Bristol Bay at 10 knots and all out of the south to southwesterly direction. Seas on this day are going to be between two to six feet on the Bering side and on the Pacific side again between five to nine feet. Looking at your Aleutians, uh, primarily a south wind direction with small crafts across the central and western Aleutians uh, slightly 
uh, the wind speeds are slightly higher across the Bering sign on the eastern Aleutians area. And we'll see seas on this day between 10 to 13 feet. The higher seas out towards the western waters on Wednesday change a wind direction with a southwesterly flow becoming more westerly across the eastern chain. And seas on this day will also be between 11 to 13 feet. Looking at your west coast, primarily a north direction becoming more southerly towards the Pribilof Islands. However, wind speeds are all under 20 knots on this day and seas are between three to four feet. Looking at your Wednesday forecast, uh, tw 15 to 20 knots across the area. Wind directional changes there from northeast to more of a southerly direction across the central waters there and the eastern waters. And seas on this day will be between three to six feet. Looking at your eastern boat for its sea coast over to the Chukchi Sea, looking at wind speeds between 10 to 20 knots and becoming a little bit stronger across Kotzebue with that surf advisory. Uh, it's going to be around 30 knots, so small craft advisory there. And seas will be between 7 to 10 feet. And also across the coastal areas to the north, seas will be between 2 to 3 feet. Wednesday, uh, flow becomes all out of the north between 15 to 20 knots, and seas on this day are going to be between 3 to 5 feet. Let's recap your forecast for tonight. Ongoing rain will bring uh, additional totals into Tuesday between 1 to 3 inches for the panhandle locations, higher amounts 2 to 6 inches for the higher elevations. Another front coming in from the northwest will drop into the interior for your Tuesday, bring some showers inland, and the western waters will see low pressure moving into the central bearing by the afternoon, with Wednesday being a showery pattern, a little bit lighter rain on this day. Thanks for staying with us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.